Our first guest tonight is an Emmy and Grammy award-winning performer who could be Grand Marshal in any Halloween parade she wanted to, but she chose to be with us instead. Her new book is called Kathy Griffin's Celebrity Run-Ins. It comes out November 22nd. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Two copies of your book now. That's oh, exciting. No. Yeah. That's right. I have a book coming out. It's going to be so good, I'll never work again. That's how juicy this book is. This to me seems like the book you were born to write. A yeah. book full of the terrible things you've done to celebrities, yes. the terrible things you've said to them, the right. terrible things they've said to you. Possibly. And you've listed them in alphabetical order, which is great. So if you're a celebrity and you're worried about being in Kathy's book, like I was worried. I knew this was coming. You turn to the K, and then you are quite relieved to see that you are not included. You are totally in there. Not by name, not in uh, alphabetical order. You better order. look again. What, what? All right, you're in the you're It goes from Anna Kendrick to Suge Knight, and I want to get to Suge Knight, by the way. <laughs> so I wrote this book because I'm 55 years old, I'm a chick comic, and I'm now that person that's only almost met everybody, but a lot of people you wouldn't think I have met, like Suge Knight, yeah. or I call him Suge, Wait. because he has a terrific sense of humor, he loves to be teased. <laughs> I didn't know that about him, that is that right? That was a close right? call, that night was a close call. Where did you meet Suge? Okay, so here's what happened. I met Suge at Cat Williams' house, obviously, and <laughs> what? um... What was going on there? At Cat's house? What year was this? Uh, uh, this was like six months ago. No. Well, it was right before, uh, Suge is on a um, staycation right now. Oh. <laughs> Like ankle bracelet type of thing? He's emotionally unavailable I right see. now for the time being. Okay. Um, but yeah, I went to Cat Williams' house one night, and um, <laughs> I was trying to make Cat laugh because I love him. And then when I saw Suge, I said, um, so when are you going to learn how to pronounce your name properly? It's obviously Suge. And then he, he makes the sound where he just goes like, Rrr. and <laughs> then I got nervous, and so I wanted to push it. And I said, you know what? I think you, Suge, need to spoon with me. I'm going to be little spoon. You be big spoon. He spoon me. I thought he might pulverize me and crush me, but I just kept pushing it and saying, see, Suge, doesn't it feel better to have some TLC, some tenderness in your life? He had his arms around me like this. My boyfriend was terrified watching this. Yeah, sure. And then I said... I would went home. You would have ditched me? Yeah. Well, I, but, but I think you would have felt better because Suge said, this is okay, but normally I like... <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> I feel that was honest. I felt that was an honest answer. <laughs> that is definitely an honest I answer. I live on the edge, James. I live on the edge. Is Suge Knight the, the scariest person that you've met? No, Barbara Walters. Bar I mean, <laughs> yeah, and by the way, I'm almost sure that Barbara Walters will be furious with me about this book, and yet I don't think she'll read it, but she'll like hear about it from Cindy Adams or somebody, then she'll be livid, and uh -huh. then I'll run into her and she'll say, I really wish you hadn't written those things about me it was wildly unfair but, <laughs> but actually I, I kind of wrote a love letter to her so you I'm did. very curious to see who's upset but I want to just kind of just talk about this because I know you don't know how to ask me and I'm just going to come out and say why you're not I in the book oh, why, you're going to say why because there, look, I cover 120 celebrities. Uh -huh. I could have written 10 of these books, but I, um, <laughs> and you know I love you. It's Thank not, you. it's, oh God, I hate to use the word boring. It's the James, <laughs> I, I just, I put so much thought into it and I couldn't come up with one time that was slightly interesting. I weaved you. <laughs> I think I weaved you into my Tupac Shakur story. I'm not sure. Oh, what's your Tupac Shakur story? I worked with him for a whole day one time, and I didn't think he could read. <laughs> yes, you, I'm telling you, you have to get this book. So for years, I've been... Okay, so one time I was on this show that Roseanne Barr hosted called Saturday Night Special, and it had this amazing cast. Jennifer Coolidge was in it, Laura Keitlinger. And so one day, um, Ice-T shows up to do a sketch, and then he just brings Tupac Shakur. Wow. So then Roseanne's like, oh, can we put Tupac in a sketch? And they put him in a sketch. But then they kept reading his lines for him. So I was fascinated to see if he was illiterate. So I followed him around all day going, how can you be this famous and be illiterate? So I'd be following him, and he wasn't noticing me or anything, but he had, like, the do-rag and the whole thing. And I'd be like, A, B, C. Like, I was trying to... <laughs> 
Ice-T was just being, oh, and Snoop was there too. But I don't know if Ice-T was just being a butt or what, but I, I, I'm pretty sure he could actually read, but it was almost as if he couldn't read. I remember being like freaked out. Wait, no, you're saying Ice-T, you're saying sh uh, that Tupac, Tupac, I wasn't sure, but Ice-T definitely, Ice-T was reading for Tupac. Oh, Like that's... they were in a sketch, he was like helping him, and I wasn't sure why. That's really so, nice. That is really I nice. I could be wrong though, like Tupac might be a, like a new Shakespeare. Well, no, but... Tupac is, well, in a way, maybe he'd be like Shakespeare. That's he's right. passed away, yeah, yeah, so he's not really around to defend himself. Well, and that's why I put the story in. I mean, <laughs> You, you should have... hear my biggie story. You know, my biggie story. Do these stories, are they, do you write them down as you experience them? Or? No, actually, they're they're all from memory. I wanted everyone to know, like, I'm not like some weirdo that tapes conversations or anything. So some of these stories are like 25 years old, some are 20 years old, some are a year old, but they're all to the best of my recollection, and my recollection is perfect. <laughs> Kathy Griffin is here. This is her book. It's called Celebrity Runners. We'll be right back. <laughs> November 22nd. I'm and just if I can have an Oprah moment, yes. everyone here gets a free book. <laughs> so so when, nice. when they go to commercial, everybody gets this mask, and you have to actually use the hashtag, and you have to send a picture of your Jimmy Kimmel ticket to redeem your free Oprah book. Oprah would just give them the books. They, I know. She Oprah wouldn't make would them totally, go through all of this. You're right. She totally would. You I'm totally on would. This, the page Kent, Jenner, Kent, comma, Kendall. Uh, I call her Candle, first of all, because here's my here's my philosophy on those Kardashians. Now, I am busy with the main three, okay? I can't be dealing with Candle and Francine and the little babies. There's, I got my I hands I think there's full. a Francine. But no. I know the Candle is your neighbor, and yeah, that yeah, story true. is one of the many times she has tried to assassinate me. What do you mean, tried you, to assassinate me? You heard me. You. Don't stick up for her. I'm reading So I was it. leaving a party one time, and um, she she has a big, like, a SUV or whatever, and she kept coming so perilously close to me. I just had to yell to random celebrities, this is it, everyone, Kendall Jenner is trying to kill me. And she just peeled out, and so she got away with it that time. But since she's your neighbor, you know, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah, Don't those you live next door to, like, Kim Kardashian? And, and Kanye. They're, Kanye? Yes. Uh, wow. What do you mean, wow, wow? Do you you got Kendall. I did go over there once. You did? Yes. What is that in here? Uh, no. Oh, interesting. A little Next bit book. too Next close time. to home, perhaps, <laughs> huh? Wow. You know, I think people thought I would put Kim in there, but I ended up putting Candle and then the mom, Chris, who I lovingly call Huggy Bear. Because <laughs> 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 Huggy Bear was a pimp, FYI. Um, <laughs> Speaking of moms, has your mom read yeah. the book? My mother has not read this book, but she finds it appalling and offensive. She does for real? Yes, she has not read it, but she is anticipating hearing that. <laughs> I get, I, no one has actually read it who's in it, honestly, but I did, of course, get the obligatory call from Cher. What did you put about me in your book? Is I that don't right? want to read it. Should I know? Maybe I shouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, it's a love letter. She's like, I'm not up to this. Cher and I said, sounds it's... just like Benji from the Howard Stern show. Isn't <laughs> Um, this is, these are some of the, uh, titles, working titles, uh, originally, yeah. the book was not originally called this, uh, first title, mm -hmm. you say, I'm not Kathy Lee Gifford, the true story of a woman who is not <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> Why did you decide I to feel that was very moving, uh -huh. but, you know, we need a happy time. There's a nod to your career in primetime television, yeah. suddenly boozing. Yeah, suddenly boozing. <laughs> Four years on NBC. Cat yeah. 22. It's always a catch. Always uh, a catch. <laughs> this is a good one. Yeah. Uh, make America gay again. <laughs> finally, I don't know what this is, but I hope I hope to see this actually get made one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy, the book is a lot of fun. It's wonderful to see you. We'll give everyone in the audience these um, haunting Kathy heads. Yes. It's very simple. Play online. I don't know how to do it, but Kathy Griffin, celebrity running. Yes. She's live in LA at the LA Times Ideas Exchange, November 28th at the World Trade. Thank you, Kathy. We'll be right back with Jacob Trumbull.